Good morning, Trainiacs. The Olympics is here. Every four, sometimes five years, the Olympics comes around and it's one of the biggest things all around the world and people from all around the world are introduced to triathlon. This is a fantastic thing. Something that's different this year as opposed to previous years is that there is betting that can happen online. I've never seen that before. Now some of the bookies out there are completely off their rocker in my opinion with who they feel that the favorites are, but and at least it gives us a reason to do this video. So what we're gonna go through today is the men's and the women's race, not the mixed relay, because I just don't know that much about it, in the Olympics for triathlons. Coming up this weekend on Sunday, you can watch the men's race, and then a couple days later, you can watch the women's race. And with the info that we're going to give you here, you might have a little bit more ammo when you're talking amongst your friends with who might win and who could come out of nowhere and really surprise people. So let's start off with the men's race. This is pinnacle.com and you can go and take a look at this for yourself and who they have as the individual favorites for the men are Mario Mola, Jonathan Brownlee, Vincent Louis, Christian Blumenfeld, and Jacob Bertwistle. Now let's start going through this point for point. Mario Mola, I would actually agree with here. If we look at the current World Triathlon ranking standings, Mario Mola is ranked number one. Now, in addition to that, when you look at Mario Mola's actual physical capabilities, which I think is gonna make a really big difference here, I think he's suited really well to do well in the Olympics because it's going to be a very hot weather race and the way that the course is designed, it favors a person that's fairly light and obviously it being ITU draft legal, it comes down a lot to the run. Mario Mola, phenomenal runner, very light. He is ranked number one in the world, but what I would wonder here is there have been races that have shown that he isn't the Mario Mola of several years ago. Times like back here in 2018, where we had a lot of first, 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 second, fourth, third, for a couple of years, well, now what we're seeing is third, 10th, 46th, fourth, there's a little bit of chinks in the armor. So do I think that he is probably the favorite? Well, maybe, I'll get to who I think is the favorite, but I think he is definitely a podium contender. Pinnacle then ranks Johnny Brownlee here as the second favorite. And when we look at the current world standings, which I'll put a big asterisk on, because these are standings as of right now, and there hasn't been a ton of racing over the past 18 months. So the standings are really going to reflect who has been able to race a lot, not necessarily who is in top form. Now, Johnny Brownlee is ranked fifth, but when we look at his, his placings over the past couple of years, we're not seeing the Johnny Brownlee of the last Olympics, where he was definitely one of the favorites. And we haven't really seen a ton of consistency from him since way back in 2016 when he was coming into Rio. That's when he was getting all over the podium. Seconds, first, second, seconds, fourth. But looking at the last year or so, we've got a ninth. We do have a first, but that isn't a really top caliber kind of race with as many competitors out there as there are in some of the WTS events. And the two WTS events that he did before then were 23rd place and 31st place. So I don't think I would say that Johnny Brownlee is going to be a medal contender. Now the third ranked athlete that they have here on Pinnacle is Vincent Louie. And I would actually probably say, looking at Vincent's physical structure, he's a smaller guy, he's a really good runner, and we look at his recent placings, first, 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 first. We also see that he did really well in Challenge Daytona. Despite a penalty, he would have been right there at the end. And this is somebody, because of his physical makeup and him being a younger athlete, so this past year has really just been more time to develop as opposed to more time like in, say, Mario Mola and Jonathan Brownlee's case to just get a little bit older. Vincent Louis is coming into his prime. So honestly, I would say that Vincent Louis is probably the or definitely one of the gold medal contenders. Now next on the list, we've got Christian Blumenfeld and Jacob Bertwistle. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say, yeah, Christian Blumenfeld, great, talented athlete. He's ranked second in the world currently for the ITU standings. But because he's such a 
big athlete, he's very muscular, he's very broad, I think that that is not going to serve him very well in the Olympics. I'm not going to really even pick him to be on the podium because I just think that physical makeup combined with the heat, combined with the hills, it's gonna be a little bit tougher. And Jacob Birchwistle being down here at 12, yeah, uh, he's a great athlete, but I wouldn't pick him to be the best of the best here in triathlon. Prove me wrong, Jacob, I would be thrilled to see you do well because you're a pretty good follow on social media. But two athletes who I think are going to do really well are first, Tyler Mislachuk. Of course, I am very biased because Tyler grew up like 15 minutes that way. He has swam in the swim spa. We went for runs when he was in town last year. But something that Tyler said to me while we were running when I said, like, honestly, how do you think you can do in the Olympics? And he said, I can't picture a course that is better suited for me. I'm light, so the hills help. I love racing in the heat. I'm light, so I am very good in the heat. He also won the Tokyo test event. And then looking at what he's done over the past couple of years, like we're not seeing too many real explosions and dominant performances in WTS race. So we're seeing a very nice upward trend and he hasn't raced a ton in the past year. So I think this past year has been a lot of chance to really get stronger because he's a young athlete athlete coming into a lot of speed. His most previous two events, he was first, first, 51st with a flat tire, second last year, fourth the year before, first in the Tokyo test event. Like this is an athlete who is really well designed for the course, really well designed for the heat, and is coming into a lot of strength. I will go out on a limb and say that I think Tyler is one of the gold medal favorites in addition to I'm going out in left field here. I'm going off the board. Nobody is expecting this, but I think that he has a really good chance. Alex Yi. Now, why I think Alex Yi could do really well is because he is such a small, slender athlete. He's a phenomenal runner. And because he's so small, that's gonna serve him really well in the heat. We also see that here in the Leeds event, he ended up winning this event by 15, 25 seconds against a pretty decent field with Christian Blumenfeld in here, Johnny Brownlee in here, Fernando Alarza, like really strong athletes that he went up against. And I think that he is showing that he is one of the best athletes there, combined with the fact that his physical makeup is probably going to suit him quite well. I think he could definitely squeak his way on the podium and being such a fast runner, I wouldn't be surprised if he ran his way through a big chunk of the field and I'll mark him as my dark horse. Onto the women's race, which I think is just an absolute crapshoot. There's probably five, maybe even seven athletes that could win gold, even get on the podium. This is a lot harder to test. Now, we're gonna kind of do them all in one here. And the reason for that is because I think they're so similarly matched. Kay Zafiris, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Jessica Learmonth, Vicky Holland, Taylor Spivy, Summer Rappaport, they're all rated as the favorites on this pinnacle.com. When we look then at the world rankings currently, Taylor Spivy, Summer Rappaport, Katie Zafiris, Jessica Lirma, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Vicky Holland, Taylor Nib, they're all up there. So how do we determine really who I think is going to be the best coming into the Olympics? I think we have to start looking at recent placings. And when we look at recent placings, I think that these standings here that Pinnacle has laid out might be a little bit tough. So looking first at the historical favorite, had you asked me this 18 months ago, who was the favorite, I would have said hands down Katie Zafiris. But her placings since last year were 11th, 6th, 22nd, 18th. This isn't boding super well for Katie Zafiris. Other athletes who have done well recently, Taylor Spivy. We can go to Summer Rappaport, who has gone 9th, 2nd, 16th in 2019, 3rd, 5th, 3rd, very, very talented athlete. Georgia Taylor-Brown, 2nd, 3rd, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Jessica Learmont, 2nd, 4th, 3rd, 7th, 2nd, 2nd. Vicky Holland, 5th, 1st, 7th, and she has been on the podium at the Olympics. And we can't really even go to the Tokyo test event 
to see who's gonna be a favorite because it's kind of all over the board. It's the same athletes, Katie Zafiris, Jessica Learmont, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Taylor Spivy, Vicky Holland. And what we're seeing is that these athletes are kind of just trading top five places over and over. But what we're not seeing from any of these athletes is like absolute dominance, just consistently being on the podium race after race after race. The two closest athletes that would be there, I think would be Jessica Learmont and Georgia Taylor Brown, who have been kind of the top one and two in my opinion. So I think the way to look at this would actually be to see who is peaking right now? Who is coming into this with good form? And if we look at the last two major competitive races, what we see is a little bit of a standout in somebody who's on their way up. Looking two WTS events ago in Yokohama, we see, yeah, Taylor Nib, Summer Rappaport, but third, Maya Kingma. We had Maya on our podcast, it was a great podcast, where she gave guidance for how to use your mental preparation as an advantage come race day. And after that, she came into Leeds and ended up winning against many of these great athletes. Jessica Learmont, Sophie Coldwell, Flora Duffy, really good athlete, Lucy Charles Barkley, Taylor Spivy, Beth Potter, who set the 5K road race world record. So Maya is coming into really, really good form. Now, I can't really go and pick a gold medal favorite because I think they're all so equally matched and it really just comes down to who gets some of the timing right with the tactics on the day and who comes into the day feeling freshest. But if I'm gonna pick the podium, I'm thinking that Maya Kingma has a good shot. I'm thinking that Jessica Learmont also really good shot, but I would say that the favorite is probably gonna be Georgia Taylor Brown. What we haven't really seen from Georgia Taylor Brown is that she gets up to winning events but she isn't consistently dominant over and over and over. So while I do think that she is likely the favorite coming into it, could go any way and it really might just come down to who has the biggest kick in the last few kilometers. So good luck to all the athletes who are there, the ones that I mentioned, the ones that I didn't mention. If you wanna go check out GTN's take on how the races will unfold, you can check out their video there. And if you wanna make sure that you don't come across as a total tool while you're watching triathlon and the Olympics as a whole over the next few weeks. There is a link in the description below to an article that I did with Triathlete Magazine that I thought was pretty funny. The boy's witty. And if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.